Today on Living Phase 2, we go to a hole in the ground. Not a nasty, dirty, wet hole filled with the ends of worms and an oozy smell, nor yet not a dry, bare, sandy hole with nothing in it to sit down or to eat. Today, we're going to a hobbit hole, and that means comfort. Welcome to Living Phase 2. Hi, I'm Mike. And I'm Nancy, and we're empty nesters striving to live life to the fullest. And we're living that full life aboard Royal Caribbean's nine-month ultimate world cruise on Serenade of the Seas. And today we're living that full life amongst the hobbits in the Shire of Hobbiton. We are. You are so <laughs> looking forward to this. Well, I was too, but, yeah. but you truly are a Lord of the Rings fan. Oh, I always have been ever since uh, I was a kid. I read the books uh, back in the 1970s. <laughs> as uh, You know, read The Hobbit, read Lord of the Rings. I read Cimmerillion, read all of them. And, you know, when I knew we were coming to Auckland, New Zealand, I had one tour and one tour only that I looked at, <laughs> and that was getting us down to visit the movie set that they've recreated for the Shire for Hobbiton, and oh, it did not disappoint. It, it didn't, and for, it, it was so fantastic. Just as a heads up, we took so much video and so many pictures. I mean, we'll tell you about our story at Hobbiton, mm -hmm. but then be sure to stay tuned at the end if you'd like to just see more pictures and videos that we mm -hmm. took, yeah. um, because it really, it, it was charming. It a was little delightful. More un, a little more unedited video, because mm -hmm. as we said, we couldn't stop taking pictures and videos. Uh, I think that uh, one of the other things that uh, people who are tuning in maybe uh, seeing our channel for the first time here we are going to show you a brand new experience here at the Hobbiton movie set that yes. just opened. So we're some of the first people to get to go through it, and it is absolutely amazing. It's a wonderful addition. You get to now go in and spend time in a Hobbit hole, uh, and actually a good amount of time, and interact with everything, sit there by the fire. It's it's a wonderful they experience. They just opened it in December, so right. this is very cool. Well, let's go ahead and tell you a little bit about our stop in Auckland. Our mm -hmm. cruise ship arrived, and we were on the Queen's Wharf right downtown. Our, our tour actually didn't depart part to drive to Hobbiton until about 11 o'clock. So we went and decided we'd just walk the town. Yeah, we did. We got off the ship. Um, the port, the, the visitor center port there, was an old warehouse but it mm -hmm. had a lot of charm and character it mm -hmm. was kind of it was kind of a unique place to walk through right we read a little mm -hmm. bit and they're trying to reclaim that uh warehouse building and they're going to turn into a shopping and entertainment district uh, so they can you have can a lot see, of fun with that oh yeah it's just a large open empty building but the woodwork and everything in it is really really quite amazing yeah. so well you leave and literally right at the nose of the ship is downtown auckland right right mm -hmm. so we walked down queen street which just across the street there and mm -hmm. that was a very high-end um you know gucci prada mm -hmm. um a lot of high-end shops there mm -hmm. but it was fun to walk up and down the street yeah get some steps in before we uh, you know go on our long ride mm -hmm. which after we returned from queen street we uh boarded our van uh we booked us a, a shore excursions group tour to take us mm -hmm. out here um let's cover this a little bit so even though we're in auckland new zealand uh i'll put a little map up here hobbiton is way down south it's it's a good two and a half to three hour drive mm -hmm. south of Auckland and uh, to the inland of New Zealand. So this is not something that you just, you know, run over to from Auckland, really from almost anywhere. We asked them. You have to them, have a plan. You do. We asked them if there's any other ports that would be closer and uh, not really. There is one other, but pretty much, you know, Auckland's a main city. This is where a lot of the tours leave from and you just have to expect a two mm -hmm. and a half to three hour drive. Um, and that's with no traffic. Right. We were very fortunate on the traffic we piece. Were. So on a cruise ship, you want to be sure that you're uh, taking precautions and making sure you leave yourself plenty of time. So the ways you can get down there, you can book a private car, you can rent a car yourself and drive. I mean, the you know, it, there is some traffic. Auckland's a fairly you know good sized city. Or you can do like we did and, and book a uh, an excursion to go. The uh, cost of the excursion is a little bit more. Um, you know, probably then you're going to pay if you just rented a car or something. Uh, but you're paying to get down there in the middle of nowhere. 
we just took the basic movie set tour, but they have other options where included with the movie set tour, you can add lunch or second breakfast mm-hmm. or an evening banquet, and you can go online and take a look at those prices. Right, and they vary, of course, but yeah. And we had some friends that did the mm-hmm. um, the lunch uh, buffet, and they said it was mm-hmm. very, very good. So that's an option if you want more, even right. more of an experience while you're there. But with our limited time being in port, uh, we did the basic tour. So. When you arrive, you ha- go to the visitor center, and at there, there's a gift shop. There is a little small cafe, so if you want to grab a little something to eat or get a cup of coffee, you can. There's restrooms, and this is a machine. It is efficient. They run people through about every 10 minutes. They have a bus that comes. You get your ticket that has a very specific time. Then you board your bus, mm-hmm. and then it's about a 10-minute ride out to the Shire, where you then... Uh, get off your bus. Mm-hmm. They have umbrellas if it's raining. And by the way, for us... Oh, boy, did it rain. <laughs> it poured. It poured. <laughs> yes. So some people have asked if we've been happy with the clothing, rain gear, everything mm-hmm. we brought. It was brilliant. We, it was perfect. We had our rain pants on, our rain jacket. We did not waterproof opt for... Waterproof shoes. Uh, waterproof hiking boots. Mm-hmm. We did not opt for a, an umbrella uh, since we had all our rain gear on. And that kept us nice and dry completely dry yeah yeah, even though it was pouring rain all day and obviously the tours do go on rain or shine and but we still had a great time we did so the tour then departs that area you walk through a narrow channel and that's actually the channel that if again i'll reference some of the movies here that gandalf rode through with his cart at the beginning of lord of the rings and then you come out and it's exposed the shire and it is incredible it is. There are 44 little hobbit holes, and we got to take a tour um, around each and every one of them. Mm-hmm. And the way I describe it, it's if you've been to Disney, how everything is just very, very Disney-esque. You know, you've got, it's just down to the, the last little detail and things that use all of your senses that mm-hmm. just kind of transport you into Hobbiton. Yes. I mean, with, with the sights and the sounds and the sounds smells for mm-hmm. instance they had smokestacks that that actually had smoke coming from them mm-hmm. and and you could smell the wood burning mm-hmm. um you could you could hear the sounds of the shire sometimes mm-hmm. that was pouring rain so much you yeah. could hardly hear it but mm-hmm. but the sounds of the shire were there and just it was just a real a, just a delightful feast for the eyes it was and we we hiked our way around we made it all the way up to bag end where you see the the iconic uh, bilbo's house here and you see the tree above it which by the way is artificial much of what you're seeing is actually artificial now they do have some things that are real plants they and the way they said it is if it's if it's planted in the ground in general it's real if it's not it's part of the movie set so Mm -hmm. well in fact let's tell you a little bit about the history here so when lord of the rings was filmed over 20 years ago and yes it was over 20 years ago for many of us uh, it may be hard to to believe that already they came out peter jackson found this site it's an idyllic sheep farm it's beautiful rolling hills of new zealand and they they came to the farmer and said we'd like to film lord of the rings here and we'd like to build the shire and the the uh, patriarch of the family of the sheep farm said, what? Lord of the what? And his son said, yes, we'll do it. (laughs) And so they allowed (laughs) them to build the Shire, but they had to make a promise to put everything back exactly the way it was. So after Lord of the Rings was filmed, they demolished completely the Shire, put it back to the rolling hills. Well, then they found that people kept coming out and saying, where was Lord, you know, where was it filmed? Where's the Shire? Where was it? Then when they did the second set of movies, The Hobbit, they came back to the farmer again, to his family and said, can we rebuild the set and shoot here again? And they said, yes, but we want you to build it permanently this time. (laughs) Yes. And so now, now it is a tourist attraction, the movie sets there, but this is actually the movie set they used to film in the movie The Hobbit. Uh, So when you see the different uh, facades of them walking around in Hobbiton, this is what you see. So, you know, inside Bilbo's house, inside this door up the steps, there really is nothing back there. The characters would go in and out of this door to get the exterior shots, and then on a soundstage is where the actual interior of the uh, Bilbo's house was of Bag End was shot on a soundstage. Mm-hmm. However, this is the great new thing that's happened here in Hobbiton. They finally have added a Hobbit hole experience. Yes. So at the end of the tour, you go and you actually, as you see here, walk into a Hobbit hole, walk through, and, and it was just... It was, it was ch- charming. It was yes. just, yeah, it was so sweet. Yes. And they encourage you to to 
touch everything and you know if it moves you can move it like the mm -hmm. sink you could turn the sinks on and mm -hmm. and it's just just as sweet I mean, as could be. Yeah, everything from bathrooms to the pantries yeah. to the kitchen to the writing area to the tables. And you get to spend a good about 20 minutes. You walk around, you know, f discovering all kinds of little things in there. And, and it was, as you said, Even I like mean. Even like the little markings uh -huh. of, of how hot, how tall the Hobbit got each year. You yeah, know, like their how children, you, yeah. How their children, yeah. You know how you mark on your on uh -huh. your wall how high your yeah. children are? Mm -hmm. That yeah. is just sweet. And so, and, and by the way, uh, for those, again, who are fans of the, the movies, where those hobbit holes are, Bagshot Row there, uh, that's where Samwise Gamgee's house is, and that is the final scene in the Lord of the Rings trilogy is there with Sean Astin, the actor, and and uh, and so that is right there. Now, that that is the third hole, so that's not one you go into, but they have two others that they bring the tours in alternating as they go through. Um, it was fantastic. I enjoyed it a lot. And then at the end of that, you come out the backside of the hobbit hole, and then you walk across the iconic bridge to the Green Dragon Pub, where the uh, the characters would go and, and spend their evenings. And you get to have a complimentary beer or cider or water. And uh, you can also um, uh, pay to get a little bit of lunch. And we did have a we had a sandwich and a and an Australian a meat, meat and ale pie, and it was very good. It was and. It, for the food, the food, and, and actually at the souvenir shop, I thought the prices were quite reasonable considering I thought the tour was rather expensive. Yeah, so I mean, like the sandwich was like $5 and the meat pie. So it was very, and again, you know, there's uh, uh, plenty to drink there with the mm -hmm. ale and the cider. So we sat and, and, and just enjoyed it by the fire there in the Green Dragon Pub. And then at, that was time to leave and go back to reality. And we got on our bus for our three hour drive back to Auckland mm -hmm. and back to the ship. So it was um, it, it, it was a little bit of an expensive tour to get there, um, but it was worth every penny. It, I think it was, it was worth every penny. It was fun and I, I enjoyed, you You were just, you were so thrilled. You were, you're like <laughs> a kid in a candy shop and it was, it was fun to watch you mm -hmm. have so much excitement mm -hmm. and enjoyment and and that gave a lot of happiness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was fun. And if anybody's ever been out there before, uh, we've talked to some friends who went and they were telling us how great it was. And we told them, they said, oh, did you get to go inside the Hobbit Holder? They're like, wait, you got to go inside? So yeah. if anybody has gone in the past more than, you know, longer ago than just a couple months ago, it's mm -hmm. a whole new experience. And to be honest, mm -hmm. I would say it'd be worth going back if you're a fan of the movies. Yes. It would be. Yeah. One question that we had at, that was asked to us once we got on the ship is, did were there hobbits around there? You know, were there people in character? Mm -hmm. And there weren't. No. So don't expect no. that. Right. Right, it's not. Um, it is truly, a, and it is a movie set. They they do pull back the curtain, so they do expose a lot of it. They tell you what's going on. They tell you mm -hmm. what's real, what's not. They, and it's fun. You get all the little fun facts about how things were move, you know, filmed, and the things that went right, the things that went wrong, and so it is. A, it's a great. It's a great day and a great experience. It is so, a great day. It um, was a great day. That's right. So once we got back to uh, Auckland, our driver dropped us off, and we thought, oh, well, you know, we're in New Zealand. Let's get a little lunch off or we din had about dinner an off. Hour. The yet before yeah. the ship pulled away so yeah so we always loved kebabs which is a um, sliced meat off of a spit that you put into like a pita type bread we always loved those when we lived overseas and there was a place there and we went to it but a little disappointing yeah, it was a little disappointing so you know every everything can't be a home you run that's right you know but we tried it it, it wasn't bad bad but it just wasn't what we remembered and so we had a little you know, we had a little bit of that and went back to the ship and uh, we decided we needed to get some rest because we were on our way to bay of islands the very northern tip of new zealand and we're going to see some glow worms and some fascinating places tomorrow so another big day it's another big day and we hope you'll follow along with us all right friends thanks so much for watching be sure to like subscribe turn on those notifications and don't forget we've got lots of video here at the end for you if for you Hobbit fans. That's right. Okay. Have a great day. Bye bye. Bye now. bye.